BoxingBoys.com, live here with Joe McCroskey on the terrace, AJ Ruiz. Uh, it's fight week, man. What, what's going on? How are you feeling? Yeah, feeling good. We've had a busy few weeks. Feels like every week's fight week for us at the moment. So, obviously, successful weekend in Vegas with Canelo Jacobs. Um, big success for us. Learn new Canelo subscribers came in. Uh, good fight. Uh, great schedule to back it up. Obviously, headlined by AJ's debut at MSG on Saturday. So, we're excited and rolling into fight week uh, Yeah, positively. How uh, surprised are you by Andy Ruiz and I guess just the way he's been filling the void that Gerald Miller left uh, verbally in his headlines? He's kind of saying the right things for the headlines. He is, and he seems confident, right? Yes. And I think that's that's encouraging for him. Why should he not be? You know, he's got a shot, a relatively unexpected one from his perspective, at becoming the, the heavyweight world champion. He should be enjoying life right now. He should be excited. He should be... Um, pumped up by the opportunity and he clearly is he speaks well I think we're um, being honest I didn't know a hell of a lot about him and his promotional sort of abilities before before we obviously started working with him and uh, we've been we've been really su we've been surprised in a good way by that and um, look come Saturday night he's gonna, he's gonna bring it AJ's not taking it lightly that is for sure and um, you know it's gonna be a great great night at the garden now, was there any like analysis done uh, to see the amount of Mexicans in the area when choosing him, or was this just strictly on availability? Yeah, we, we obviously share. I think I've said this to you before. We share a, you know, a pretty active seat at the table when when opponents for our big fighters are, are being lined up. Um, it's not, obviously it's not rocket science to say that we've got a lot of our subscribers right now are are Hispanic Americans, right? Um, Canelo being probably the biggest name we've got in the United States uh, driving the, the majority of our subscribers right now. So uh, if there is an opportunity to pair one of our big names, AJ, with a, with a fighter that, that appeals to that audience and speaks to them and gives them a reason to, to watch more of his own content, we're going to take that. And Andy, Andy Ruiz um, you know, filling the, the void left by Miller is, was an opportunity for us to do that. Um, and you know, we work with Eddie closely in, in making those calls. I wouldn't say it's super scientific. It's pretty, it's pretty commonsensical, right? That we have lots of Mexican fight fans on our platform. We want to serve them with content they want. This, this helps us do that. So, the plan obviously is for AJ to get past Andy Ruiz. Yeah. But do you think that there's any pressure on him, being as though that Wilder was the first to start the three heavyweights coming into action, and he has that highlight real performance. Is there pressure on AJ to perform just as good? Because it seems like Wilder's passed him the baton. AJ will get the win past the baton to Tyson Fury to yeah. see what he can do on ESPN. Yeah. I, I'm absolutely sure that that plays into his thinking, right? Uh, he'll probably not admit it. I wouldn't admit it if I was him. I'm definitely not him, so i probably slipping out of tongue there. But absolutely, it's a pressure. Um, there's a pressure with elite sport at, any le at, at that level, right? So he'll be wanting to to shut some people up. He wanted to put his his uh, his flag, his British flag, in American soil and announce his arrival here, um, because down the line, as we all know, there are, there, are, there are big fights to come if he can do that. When a fighter like Devin Haney gets the type of knockout that he got in uh, Maryland in the DC DMV yeah. area, and social media picks up on it and yeah. they share it and spread it like that, is that something that the zone is? I guess in approval of. Absolutely. Are you happy when? Obviously, it's part of the promotional machinery, right? We 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 take that highlight knockout clip, we put it on social media, and we we pump spend behind it to get it out there and, and promote it. So yeah, we want that. We want there to be a hype uh, around. Does our that fighters. drive subscribers? Yeah, it does. It also drives our brand awareness, right? People forget we're six or seven months into the United States, and um, I said this week to someone else, it's the, I think it's the hardest country in the world to launch a new brand in because we are obviously a we're primarily a fight sports broadcast business right now. We're taking on the established guard of, of linear pay TV broadcasting. We're brand new. That's just in the world of boxing. If you look at the world of entertainment, the world of media, the world of celebrity, we're, we're right now a, a brand new entrant into that space trying to grow our brand. So we want, when we have a, a highlight moment like that, um, after it's obviously broadcast on the zone, we want to take it and, and use it for, for everything it's worth. And in doing so, we promote the value of our fighters, we promote their their, their future bouts, we promote their, their own brand name. So um, it's great for us when that happens and we're very supportive of it, yeah. So for the zone highlights, it's pretty much like every network, highlight, um, knockouts drive the fight. Well, I think highlight knock, well, in boxing, 
people want to see knockouts yeah. and they go viral when they're spectacular like Devin Haney's was like uh, Deontay Wilder's was um, that's great for, for Steven Espinosa at Showtime with the Deontay Wilder knockout was great for us Devin Haney we're hoping something similar this weekend so who else is the zone invested in in the heavyweight division in terms of wanting to show them for the US market so what do you, what do you mean by that like how invested are you in Philip Hargrovic? Uh, I know he's Croatian. Yeah. Um, is that someone that you want to have on U.S. territory Absolutely. and on the zone? Absolutely. We, we, we will work with our promotional partners to identify the guys that have superstar potential that can move the needle for us longer term and can make great fights that fight fans want to see. And we'll work with our promotional partners to map out plans to um, to grow their brand names, to invest in their in their shows, to invest in marketing around their shows. Um, and I think obviously there's the obvious ones are the big names, uh, but the likes of Devin Haney, um, the likes of um, uh, Ryan Garcia with Golden Boy, young guys, we want to invest in those guys longer term because we see the next generation behind the current superstars are being equally as important to us. We can't just invest for the short term and then panic in two or three years time when those guys are no longer the, the hottest show in town. We need to plan for the future and we're always doing that. So there's been some rumors of a possible Gary Russell signing. Is there interest in him? He was in the uh, DMV area for your Devin Haney show. That's a question you have to ask Eddie. Um, but as a for like for well, zone, he's a great fighter. It's interesting, but Eddie's Eddie's leading those discussions for us. Would lead those discussions for us. So that's a question for him. Okay, okay. So um, wh what's next um, for you know the Zone USA? We've got a three-week residency at Madison Square Garden with uh, obviously AJ this weekend, Triple G, and then Bellator on the 15th. So that's a pretty pretty packed uh, sort of early couple of weeks in June. Um, we've got a we're building out. I think in the we've announced our summer schedule. We're in the process now, a lot of my time going into the back end of the year, looking at the fights we can make. Obviously, AJ will fight again this year. Uh, Canelo will fight again in September, Triple G will fight again later in the year, so we're talking to the relevant people there to build out the schedule and, and announcing stuff as soon as we can because... I'm hearing rumours of a Bivol versus Marcus Brown. Interesting. It's an interesting fight, right? Do you like that? I've seen a slight smirk. Oh yeah, it's an interesting fight, no? No, it is. It yeah. is. It's, a, it's actually more interesting to me because Marcus Brown is a PBC fighter or an Al Heyman advised fighter, yeah. so it means that you guys or Eddie and that entity will be doing business, yeah, which only can mean good, good things thing. for boxing Look, fans. You asked me what we're working on, we're working on making the best schedule in boxing. And I, that, that, that is something we work on all the time. We've got a, we've had a fantastic schedule in the sort of late spring rolling into the summer. Keller Jacobs was fight of the years thus far. Um, in terms of a matchup, we're looking to build that as far in advance as possible so we can continue to announce great fights, continue to demonstrate value to fight fans and our subscribers. And in doing so, continue growing our, our subscriber base, which is in, it was in a pretty healthy position right now. So that's what I'm working on pretty much full time at the moment. Canelo Jacobs caused the zone to release numbers when we had a conversation, you guys said, because you were a private company, you didn't release numbers. What happened? What changed? Well, it was a success. We wanted to talk about it. Now, um, Learn in America, you like you have to talk about your successful moments, right? Americans right, like doing absolutely that. Absolutely right. No, jokes aside, it, it was a success for us. Um, it, I think for me, for us, it demonstrates the it demonstrates the the strategy that we have in the in, in the U.S. starting to be effective. I think most industry commentators would have pegged that fight at maybe a five hundred thousand pay per view fight. Roughly about right. I mean, there's an argument either side. You think side. it would have only done 500? Uh, on a, a, conservative, a conservative view and a sort of middle of the road view of what that would have done was 500,000. Probably not a million miles away from being right. For us, releasing those numbers, obviously we, we released our global numbers, but the vast majority of those numbers coming from the United States, for me, is the it's an early sign that we are our strategy is starting to become effective. And what I mean by that is we're starting to get more people watching those fights because of a better for fans distribution model. The price is better, the way of accessing it better, we believe our marketing is deeper and better. Um, and so those numbers are illustrative of that strategy starting to become effective. For me, it's very encouraging that after only eight or nine months in the United States, and only after our second Canelo fight, we're already able to say that because I think if you were taking a pessimistic view or a conservative view, you'd think it would take longer for us to get that momentum. The reason we re released those numbers was to say it started to be effective already, and that helps our business in a number of ways, obviously as well as making 
uh, our internal lives easier. So, um, look, that's why we release the numbers. We won't always release numbers. We haven't made a, made a habit of it in all our, our markets. Uh, we'll do so when, when it makes sense for us. And in that instance, it made, it made sense for us to do it. Damn. But you know that's going to make people assume, like, now if you don't release AJ's numbers, who's your next biggest no, we, star, if not the biggest star, then they'll assume the numbers weren't good because you didn't release. Okay. As I said, we'll release numbers when it makes sense for our business. We're a private business. We don't have that pressure to do it. Uh, it doesn't mean it won't be a success. We'll release them, you know, when it makes sense at, at, at different intervals. Um, for our business, as we have done every other market. We're very excited about this weekend. I think the benefit of scheduling AJ on the 1st of June is that all of our Canelo Jacob subscribers, of which there were many, many new ones, are able in the first month of their subscription to watch this guy fight. Um, within their first month so that's great for them they've obviously got triple g the following week uh, and, and then in my opinion the best scheduled in boxing will roll into the back end of the year uh, once we get through the summer so exciting time for us and exciting time for our subscribers definitely is how how much um do you think the heavyweight division plays a factor into boxing is that like I guess the cliche is that the heavyweight division brings out the casuals. Do you feel that? Yeah, I do think that. Oh, you do? But I do think also that the middleweight division's on, on fire right now, has been for a couple of years, and that has engaged the casual audience. Look at the biggest pay-per-view events in the last two or three years. Yes. Um, many of those are middleweight fighters, uh, and they those are numbers that are not hardcore only boxing fans. They are casual boxing fans as well. So. We're heavily invested in um, the middleweight division. We have a number of chips in that in that game. Obviously, we have AJ's our, our leading sort of light in, in the heavyweight division. For us, I think right now that's where we're most most of our attention is served. But there's there's other fights we want to make longer term that we, we see interest in. Um, yeah, middleweight and heavyweight, I think, are, are those that can really engage the casuals, or, or, or have done more recently. Are the rumors better left to ask Eddie? Because there's been a rumor for a long time now about Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and maybe a Sergio Martinez comeback in, on the zone. Yeah, you're, you're, you're right to say that's a better question to ask Eddie. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to thank you for your time, no, as you always, time. and uh, uh, we'll look for Eddie. Thank yeah. you. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon dot com backslash the boxing voice we have tons of exclusive from border wars and title betting shows the list goes on and on and on but in addition to that if you guys have questions for fighters trainers and promoters this is where you can submit them we will run out get these questions answered and put it back on the show just for you guys appreciate it peace